It has pleased the Almighty God to bless this channel with the ability of seeing things long before they happen. And therefore many, many times people are new to us have come to this channel and they have wondered what are these people talking about? And they have left in a half. However, right now in Kenyan politics a lot of that what is this guy talking about is starting to unfold right before our eyes. It is starting to be clear right before our eyes. For example, the implosion of the UDA party should now be crystal clear to a vast majority of Kenyans. Especially after the bombshell revelation the Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa has purchased a political party. <laughs> you see, this is not new. This has happened before. In May 2017, I carried an exclusive report right here on this channel indicating that the then Deputy President William Samoy Ruto preparing for the elections of 2017 under the Jubilee Party in partnership with Uhuru Kenyatta who was the presidential candidate and Ruto the deputy had done something very strange. I had information from a very reliable source that he had just purchased a political party called POA, Party of Action, from his cabinet colleague, Rafael Tuju. What is this man talking about? We are waiting for the elections and Ruto will be Uhuru's running mate. What nonsense is this man talking about? The information that we did not have at the time is that on purchasing this political party, Ruto changed the name to Party of Development and Reforms. That was in 2017. On December 2020, this same political party had another change of name. It was changed to UDA, United Democratic Alliance, yeah, the current ruling party in the Kenya Kwanzaa coalition. Fast forward to the present. Although it is not Kumekucha breaking that story this time, it is widely known amongst analysts that Rigadi Gashagwa has just purchased a political party. Details are scanty, so we don't know which one. But please refer to the chain of events concerning a party called UDA, which started off as a party called Power. Okay? And this time round, hey, this Rigadi Gashagwa move is very significant. Much more significant than most people realize. And I'll come back to that shortly and explain exactly why this is a game-changing move yeah, that will have far-reaching political consequences, much more than people think. In the year 2019, I did a video on this channel that many regulars found strange. That video focused on a prediction based on a, a prophecy that had been there since before Christ and since before the Romans. And we said in the video that attack would take place soon. How soon is soon? Well, if you take in that video, it will become very clear to you very quickly that we did not envisage that it would take so many years to come to pass. However, as we speak, it has happened. 
And what I need to say about that to my fellow Kenyans is ka rada. Why? Because when it is all over, the world will have changed very significantly forever. Because the prophecy from ages ago talks about a mind-blowing conclusion to this conflict that is difficult for the human brain to understand and comprehend, let alone internalize. Yeah, and I refer you to the book of Ezekiel. Especially chapter 39. In other news, the Inspector General of the Police has been quoted as saying that he will crush the medics. He will crush the medics. Now Kenyans will know that there is an ongoing strike by doctors in Kenya that is on day 33 as we speak. Kenyans will also know that picketing is in our constitution and this is not a matter of interpretation as the UDA government may want us to believe. No! It is in very clear language. And therefore Inspector General Kome's statement is nothing short of criminal yeah, against the Constitution. Now, traditionally, all over the world, the way governments have dealt with strikes is to allow them to continue while pretending to be running here and there, trying to address the situation. The whole objective being that as time passes, people get tired, people get broke, families of those involved in the strike start getting affected, and wives start telling their husbands, families start telling the member of the family in the strike, please stop, we are suffering. Please concede. Please accept the terms of the government and let our lives go back to normal. It is human nature. Inevitably, that is what happens and gives the government an upper hand. However, sadly for Ruto's regime this time round, things in Kenya are different. What is the mood in Kenya right now? Do you envisage any doctor's family uh, telling the doctor, please stop? Do you? I just want to pose that question to you to answer for yourself because what I'm about to say some people may not agree with mostly because they will not allow logical analysis to get in the way of their raw emotions. They think with their emotions. Well, the first problem with somebody telling the doctors, let our life go back to normal. The first problem is very simple. What normal? What kind of life were Kenyans living before that strike? What kind of life are Kenyans living? right now during that strike? If you can answer that question correctly, you will understand where I'm going with this one. And if you want evidence of that, then take careful note of how greedy opportunistic politicians want to join in the momentum of this strike. Do you think they would have done that if they believed that this was something that could be stopped in a flash? 
make no mistake about it. Politicians are many things, but usually they read the signs and the mood on the ground correctly. And when they make a mistake, their survival is at stake. Therefore they are very keen and the experts at reading the situation on the ground. And what they are telling us is that this doctor strike eh, and I. It is my confident prediction that if the government does not move with speed to concede accept everything that the doctors want then what is going to happen next is definitely not going to be to their advantage because the doctors are going to be joined by many many other Kenyans who will rudely shove the politicians aside and join and we will have in the country called Kenya very shortly the mother of all strikes, demonstrations, picketing, protests, never seen in these shores before. It just beats me how a government being run by intelligent people can be so relaxed when there are too many angry people in the country. Too many, way too many. We have the fake fertilizer saga which has enraged many farmers across the country. And very significant, a very high percentage of these farmers are bang in the middle of UDA's strongest support base in the Rift Valley. Folks, Prepare for the mother of all demonstrations in the country called Kenya. It's coming. Right. Back to Rigadi Gashagwa. Now, granted, Bwana Gashagwa is not William Ruto. No. This is a rookie politician. A one-term member of parliament in Madeira. To be clear, he was a member of parliament in Madeira and then he became deputy president. And again, this is not the first time this is happening. Between the year 1988 and 1989, one short year, a few months, we had the fifth vice president of the Republic of Kenya. His name was Dr. Josphat Karanja. And he too was a one-term legislator of a constituency in Nairobi called Madare. He had not even completed his first term as a member of parliament. And then, pop, he was vice president. He did not last. You see, politics, <laughs> politics is not a joke. It is not designed for rookies. It is not designed for people who suddenly, very quickly, think that they get it as far as politics is concerned. But the biggest headline in this saga, uh, this move by Gashagwa, is that it has to be the final nail on the coffin of a party called UDA. Why? Because UDA was launched in the Mount Kenya region. And according to the election results, Ruto got more votes in the Mount Kenya region than even in his own Rift Valley backyard. Okay? And therefore, UDA, without regard to Gashagwa, even though he is the inexperienced politician, would mean no UDA. However, it is very important for us to note that the end of the UDA party does not mean the end of the Ruto presidency. No, it doesn't. Both will end, yes, but they'll end at different times. Although in my opinion, UDA already is 
kuisha maneno uda is history yeah a very brief footnote in our history but that does not mean the end of ruto it means the beginning of the end of ruto and again this has happened before in our history in the run up to the 2007 general elections number 3 mwai kibaki who had been elected on a dp democratic party ticket under the national rainbow coalition formed his second political party another brand new party called pnu party of national unity to run in those 2007 presidential elections and so in case ruto survives to 2027 he will have to do the same for sure yeah because uda kwisha maneno now it is very instructive why mwai kibaki abandoned the vehicle that took him to state house democratic party and founded the pnu party you see even if you're going to rig a general election even if you're going to rig a presidential election you have to get involved in something called political campaigns and in those political campaigns you have to be convincing that at least you have some following the reason why mwai kibaki abandoned dp is simply because it would have been impossible for him to campaign it would have been impossible for those members of parliament supporting him to campaign on a dp ticket the party was too unpopular on the ground and that is exactly the same with uda today you see you don't want to turn up at a political rally to campaign and then people start throwing stones at you immediately they see your party colors immediately they see you coming they are so angry so much so that most ignore you and will not come to your meeting but there'll usually be another group of people who are just too annoyed always kuvumilia who will throw stones at you and therefore to enable penetration at least for campaigns on the ground you will need a brand new outfit so that when the local people see the colors ai pia new au ni nani this a new political party ah yeah it is mwai kibaki's new political party ah that is okay at least it is not that devil called dp we don't want to see it fast forward to the present you will not even get to the a when you start saying u d you will not get to a <laughs> people will have already reacted and you don't want that and so prepare yourself for the bombshell i'm about to release it is quite possible it is highly likely that the brand new party that regardi kashago has purchased will be the vehicle with which william ruto will use to run for the presidency in 2027 ah yeah 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 folks this could be a strategy to keep the hopes of one william ruto alive for 2027 so regardi gashago has this new party closer to the elections they will start campaigning vigorously using this new party and then at the last possible minute voila the presidential candidate of this particular political party will be william ruto i am saying that is a high possibility based on the information that i have currently folks never forget politics is not your election in primary school or even in high school for a class monitor no <laughs> no 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 politics is a much more complex 
very dirty game yeah, that should not even be called a game where it is a very bad idea to make sweeping conclusions and sweeping statements and then stick to them saying you're very sure <laughs> you don't do that with politics politics is a different thing let us appreciate that please we have now entered the last 24 hours of that special offer the window of opportunity is going to shut for my highly sensitive special report you can see details on your screens right now which I highly recommend to you if you're able because it will help you understand a lot of things even this latest developments will become clearer to you when you get the inside information most of it highly sensitive not in the public domain of what is really going on in the back room of Kenyan politics and of course this latest offer has that special privilege of getting the previous special reports highly sensitive special reports two of them for free yeah and so all you need to do is to get the current special report 3999 Kenya shillings only or 31 dollars and pop you'll have the two previous highly sensitive special reports one of which focuses on a man called William Ruto, whom Kenyans still don't understand. Up to now, they still don't. You know, in the run up to the 2022 presidential elections, I watched as a man called Miguna Miguna fully supported Ruto for the presidency. And I said to myself, this man is old enough. He should know what kind of person he is supporting for the presidency but apparently didn't now recently Miguna Miguna has denounced abandoned his earlier support after realizing very late what kind of person he was supporting and so if a well-informed Kenyan who has been there for a long time did not see William Ruto, for who he really is. Who are you? Yeah, you have an excuse for not knowing, for not having a clue, even after everything that has happened in the country called Kenya. Because the latest campaign slogan is give Ruto the benefit of the doubt. Give him time! <laughs> and he will prove that he can change Kenya. What? Anyway, I highly recommend this special offer. Go for it so that you understand more. So that you get a better grasp of where we are politically. Not in a good place, my friends. Not in a good place. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.